Hello and welcome to Tim Conley Drums. Well, today I have kind of a, <laughs> a comical story. Not every story is doom and gloom and terrible bandmates and all that drama. Sometimes things just happen that are unexplainable and comedic. And um, this story today reflects that exactly. So I was playing a gig. It was a, um, a fundraiser cancer fundraiser and cancer of course is not comical at all it's very scary but <clears throat> even though we were at a fundraiser for cancer an event uh we were in good spirits because we were doing a good thing we were trying to raise money for a specific type of cancer research and this was quite a few years ago probably 15 years ago i'm i'm gonna guess something like that and um, we were the headlining act on the bill. There was four bands. We were the headlining act. And so we were going to go last. So this story has numerous kind of twists and turns in it. So bear with me here. <laughs> First of all, um, I was told that I did not need to bring a drum kit. I'm actually just going to throw this snare off so we don't have any snare vibration. I don't have to bring a drum kit. Okay, that's always a bonus for us, but <laughs> anytime you don't bring your own gear, you're risking being at the mercy of other people and their gear. So this is an interesting part of the story. So <clears throat> get to the gig, and the band that was, um, I think, going on third, I think, I think it was the third band, that drummer brought his drum kit. Now. When I actually got there, I, all I brought was, I think I brought some cymbals, I think I brought a ride, the essentials, no matter what, the essentials would be ride cymbal, china cymbal, bass drum pedal, stool, and of course, uh, sticks. I mean, those are the absolute bottom line essentials. Even if I'm playing a gig where there's a house kit, full back line, whatever, I always bring those things because... I want to be comfortable and I want to make sure my stool height is correct. My bass drum settings are correct. I always love my China cymbal. <clears throat> and of course, you got to bring your own sticks. That's a no brainer. And I love my, um, my ride cymbal as well. Now, this particular one isn't, the, isn't the, my go-to ride cymbal. My go-to ride cymbal is an HHX Groove Ride. Love that cymbal. It's on my one of my other drum kits out in the garage, but it's not on um, this kit. This is a Dave Weckl HHX Evolution ride, uh, 20 inch. The one I like is a 21. Anyways, I bring those essentials. I get to the venue. And of course, I know that we're last, so I'm not going to set up my stuff, but I put it up on the stage. I go up on the stage, and much to my surprise, it appears that Neil Peart or possibly Terry Bazio is playing at this gig. I'm like, <laughs> and I mean that jokingly. What I mean is the drum kit was massive. I mean, it must have taken this guy three or four hours to set this kit up. <clears throat> I couldn't stop laughing because I'm like, this guy must be really something to spend the amount of time by himself. It's not like he's got a team. Terry Bazio, I think, has three or four employees. Neil as well. I know Neil has three for sure because I've met one of them and talked to him. <laughs> and they go and they set Neil's kid up and Terry's crew sets, sets his kid up. And it takes three hours for both of them to set up all the gear. And then, of course, sound check on top of that. The whole thing takes hours and hours. And that's Neil and Terrio. Terrio. Terry Bazio, <laughs> <clears throat> that's two big name pros that have a team. So this guy was not a big name pro. He's just an average Joe drummer, not professional. We were the only pro band there. Everybody else was an amateur band, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter because it's a fundraiser. People are there to enjoy the music, donate money. There was games being able to, um, you know, different types of games being played and stuff. And it was a fundraiser. So <clears throat> this drum kit, though, ridiculous. 12, 13 cymbals, uh, double bass, 
uh, about four or five rack toms, concert toms, two or three floor toms, two or three auxiliary snares. It was a massive kit. Terry Bazio, like I said, and Neil Peart, they would have been proud. <laughs> but for me, this is a massive kit and way too much for what I wanted to do. But again, like I said, wasn't my drum kit. It was this. Somebody else brought the drum kit in, and I was just happy that, hey, I don't have to tear it down and set up this kit, <laughs> to be totally honest, because anyone that's a pro in the biz knows you want to show up with the lightest gear and the least amount of equipment because you want your setup and tear down to be really quick, plus carrying it, just carrying it from your house to the car, from the car to the house carrying it from the venue. I've had some nightmare times where I've had to carry gear up three, four flights of iron stairs or metal stairs in the winter, slippery as hell. And half the time I can remember falling down, actually falling down the stairs and it was a nightmare. But <clears throat> anyways, that aside, let's get to the story here. So, uh, the first band starts, and like I said, they were just kids, like a teenager band. You know, they played some straight-ahead rock tunes. Everything was fine. You know, just a kid band. Everybody applauded. People had fun. You know, we were really um, happy to see these teenagers out there playing some, some cool music. Second band gets up there. Similar situation. They were young adults, but a similar situation. And, uh, you know, managing on this drum kit for these young drummers was really something. <laughs> now, like I said, the third band, that was the drummer's kit. <clears throat> so I was expecting something really special. And I was actually really looking forward to this band. So the guy sets up, like I said, he's got his drum kit set up. And then the band is supposed to go on. You know, it's timed and everything. Well. I discovered, I'm sitting in the crowd, keep in mind, I'm not backstage, there was no green room, but I'm not backstage or up on the stage or stage right, stage left, whatever. I'm on the uh, audi in the audience, but I realized that something is wrong. <clears throat> so I'm just sitting there, I'm not doing anything, it's got nothing to do with me, but I realized something's wrong. And what it what ended up happening was, which I, totally don't understand it's kind of comical but not comical they couldn't find the drummer so he comes and sets up his massive kit and then he disappears and nobody really knew where the heck he was or what was going on so there's a slight delay while the band tries to find their drummer so <clears throat> It puts the whole thing into a little bit of a disarray when the timing element of the of the event is being thrown off. And I have to admit, I'm a stickler for time. If we're told we're on at nine, I'm on at nine. I've always been very um, dedicated to a time because part of being professional is sticking to a schedule that you've been given by the venue. Very important, very important. Anyways. Time goes on. They can't find this guy. They don't know what's going on. It appears like he's left the building. Elvis has left the building and he hasn't returned. So they don't know what to do. So I find this out because somebody comes down off the stage and comes over and starts talking to us like my band because, of course, we're going to be delayed. And it looked like the third band was just going to get canceled. Um until somebody asked me if I would get up and play with them because I'm the, the next drummer coming up and technically the only pro in the, in the group. So anyways, I took a quick look at their set list and <clears throat> ended up, I knew all the songs. So I started playing with them, uh, got up on stage and um, luckily there were no backing tracks or anything like that. And basically, Obviously, no rehearsal, but basically the tunes were the same arrangements as the originals, and they were pretty straight ahead, simple tunes. Okay. So I ended up playing a few tunes, and then lo and behold, I think it was about the, 
after the third tune, singers are talking and the drummer shows up. What, what, where'd he come from? <laughs> so of course he comes up, he's fumbling around. Uh, he's visibly nervous and shaken. And it, it's just a weird situation. And of course, I, I just said to him, I go, hey, man, I was just filling in for you while, you know, the band was um, the band was waiting for you. And I was just filling in. I didn't know if you were not going to come or whatever, you know, quick explanation of why I'm on his kit. He's uh, angry. He's not happy that they started without him. But I'm sorry, you're 20 minutes late for when you were supposed to start. So it's not my fault. It's not your band's fault. It's your fault. Punctuality is king. <clears throat> Anyways, he takes over. It turns out the guy's an absolute beginner. He's got this massive Terry Bazio Neil Peart drum kit, but basically all he played was the simple boots and cats. Boom, got, boom, got, boom, got. Drum fill. Digga, 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 digga. So it was very basic drumming, and uh, he didn't really need this massive kit. I guess this is just his kit, and he thought it would be cool to set it up. I didn't see him hit anything other than a couple of toms, a few cymbals. He didn't do much anyway, but I don't care. That's not. I'm not here to drag the guy down because he's a beginner. I have no problem with that at all. Okay, so the story doesn't end here, though. You think it's over. He comes back, and he carries on. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what ends up happening is I leave the stage. I go back to the audience. My bandmates are like, hey, you know, good job, whatever. We're kind of laughing about it. And the singer starts to thank everybody for being there. And he does this big, long spiel about why he's here and everything. And then he says, okay, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm going to make up a fictitious name. But he goes, okay, Tony, count the song in. Nothing. And you see the whole band do one of these. And they look, he's not on the drum kit. <laughs> and they're like, what the hell? He was just there, and now he's gone. And I can remember when I sat down, I saw him at the drum kit, and I remember seeing him get up off the drum kit and kind of walk to the right. But I didn't think anything of it. Nothing. I didn't think anything of it. The guy's there. He's supposed to be playing. He was right at his kit. When they go to count the tune in, he's not there. So the guitar player goes over to the singer. And you can, you know, it's the old into the mic. <laughs> That's all you can hear. <laughs> and they're trying to figure out what to do. All of a sudden... They don't know what to do. There's like a, a, a weird tension moment and, and, and the audience is, you know that rustling sound when you hear from an audience when it's really quiet and it sounds like tumbleweed blowing through the place? <laughs> so there's this awkwardness that's taking place. All of a sudden, the guy comes out of, like down the hallway, like or sorry, down in the auditorium. We were in a school. In the auditorium, he comes running through these doors and he comes running up to where the stairs are leading up to the stage. And his pants are like falling down. He, he trips. He's like pulling his pants up, but they're falling down. And it turns out he had to go to the bathroom so badly that he couldn't wait. And even he didn't tell anybody, though. <laughs> he just took off. Remember earlier in the story when I mentioned that I saw him leave his drum kit and head right? Well, he was heading right, and I didn't see him go any further because I wasn't paying attention to him. But he ran down, and he obviously went into the washroom, but he didn't tell anybody. So the band, for some reason, they weren't paying attention. They're amateurs. They're not pros. So, you know, they're not used to stage etiquette and whatever. Anyways, this guy, stumbling and falling and pulling his pants up, <laughs> runs up, gets on the stage, and then they ended up playing a condensed set because, like I said, we wanted to be on time. And I remember telling the, um, the venue, the guy that was running this whole thing, that regardless of what happens with this band, we're starting on time. And they wanted to do that. So they end up playing two songs, very simple, straight ahead. And um, uh, we got up there and we, we did our thing. Now, <clears throat> again, the story does not end. 
I could not play with this setup. He, his setup was just so bad. The cymbals were like hanging over the tom, so you couldn't even hit the toms. The ride was way over here, hi-hat way over here. The double kick was just a bit of a nightmare the way he had it set up. So I ended up having to strip the drum kit down. I pulled one of the bases off, um, you know, re put where the ride cymbals stand. I had to redo the whole kit. It took me, we actually were a tiny bit late because I had to restructure this drum kit. It was a bit of a nightmare. The guy is getting mad because I'm moving his drum kit. Now, you got to remember something. He's done playing. It doesn't matter. He's going to have to tear this drum kit down anyways. It absolutely does not matter that I'm moving the drum kit around because it's not like I'm tearing it all down and he's got to then reset it all back up to play. That's not the situation. He was done playing. He just did not like the fact that I was readjusting his glamorous Terry Bazio setup. He was offended by it. Anyways, we do our thing. We play. The whole time, this guy is just angry, glaring at me. I just ignored him. I'm just like, hey, man, you know, I'm just here to do my thing. So at the end, he comes up to me and he says, how'd you like the kit? And I said, yeah, it was fine. He goes, oh, I don't think you liked it. And I'm like, w what do you mean? Well, why'd you tear it all apart? And I'm like, well, I told him the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. I said the things were all set up wrong. Um, I didn't like the way you set it up. It was uncomfortable for me. I got to play. I had to rearrange things to make it comfortable for me. And you got way too much equipment. Oh, this is my prized possession, my drum kit. You know, and I'm like, yeah, I get it, man. I have a prized possession drum kit at home too. But if you're going to be a working musician, you cannot. How long did it take you to set this up? He tells me it took him three and a half hours. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? So... I mean, it takes me 20 minutes, generally speaking, to set my drum kit up. Now, I got it down to a science, but still, I tried. This is, you know, I don't bring a huge load. This is actually more than what I would even bring. Sometimes I do bring three cymbal, four cymbal setup. That is true. I always play with a five-piece kit. I almost never bring the second floor tom. This is probably a standard setup for what I use. You know, ride cymbal, china, splash, crash that's about all, all the symbols that I use, unless <clears throat> I know I'm playing a bigger gig where I need more equipment. Anyways, this guy is mad at me, and um, we, we have like a little bit of a confrontation. But at the same time, he's much younger than me, and I'm sort of educating him, but he just didn't want to hear what I had to say. He did not care that you know, I, I was giving him good advice about moving equipment around and whatever. He didn't care. Anyways, I just said, look, dude, <clears throat> do what you got to do. Set it up any way you want in the end because it was just an argument that I wasn't going to win and I don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to set it up the way I want. He's going to set it up the way he wants. And if he wants to spend three hours, three and a half hours setting his drum kit up every time they play, so be it. I'll bet you anything. I'll bet you a thousand dollars right now that that guy probably got sick of doing that after three, four, five gigs. And he probably then realized, hey, that guy from that gig that night was probably right. So <laughs> in the end, it was <clears throat> an eventful night. I was happy to be there, happy to be playing and raising this money for a, a very worthy cause. But man, what a night dealing with this guy. <laughs> very, very comical. <clears throat> I want to thank all my new subscribers. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm getting some really great comments. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. And I really want to thank you guys because it means so much to me um, moving forward. I'm trying to grow this channel and make it another stream of income for me and all of the likes and the comments and everything that generates the algorithm and the algorithm then sends it out to more people more people watch and we can start building up this channel and i can keep putting out material so i want to thank you guys and i want to thank you all for watching and tuning in and as always keep drumming see ya